Hi, Trini. Hi, Jemima. What are we doing on Closet Confessions today? Well, I just thought, because it's the week in which I've had a big birthday, I wanted to look through, and I was looking at my phone now, because I've put all my outfits here, and I've done this for years. I have books of outfits, too. In fact, I'm going to try and find those books when Lila's always up looking about dresses, and here I say to you, it was in the book she found. Mm -hmm. And I thought I'd find my favourite 60 outfits and take you through them. Oh, yes, please. Yeah. But I'm not going to try them all on because that would take us hours. So <laughs> come in here and let's go through together and we can have a look and I'll tell you about them. I'm starting off with an outfit that my mother had a habit of dressing us all the same. I don't know what this did to my poor brother, but he did suffer quite a few years up to when he went to prep school, where I think he was dressed to be identical to my sister and I. For me, it was delightful because I was the youngest and it made me feel I was like my older sister, but God knows. Anyway, it happened for years. And then we went on many years later, and this is me when my nephew is being christened and I'm the godmother. And I remember this is a Lolita Lempica suit and I love this suit because it was just this color. Look at that tremendous amount of fake tan I'm wearing and you can see how orange my chest is compared to the white tights I'm wearing. My hair is very long. I had quite bad acne. I used to cover it under hats. And I'm wearing my first pair of Chanel earrings I ever bought and I was so excited to have bought them. I remember this moment. I remember loving this outfit, feeling so good in it. I bought it in Paris. I was working there at the time and I felt sophisticated and chic. This is at Ascot with my family, definitely in the 80s. It just screams 80s. And I remember this is something where I didn't like my knees at the time. We all had little foibles. And so I put a skirt under a dress. What's changed? A little pearl choker. And I had this very big hat on because, again, I didn't like people looking at my skin and I wanted a very big hat to hide under. And shoulder pads which of my best friend. My, my, my sister looks incredibly chic in her red and white polka dot. And my mother um, looks lovely. That is my pookie, if anyone wears pookie at Trinity London. Um, that's her mother, Ingrid, looking fabulous in that hat. But I'm not sure about the tent of a linen outfit, Ingrid. But the hat is magnificent. Then this is me at... My mother used to be the chairman of the Dogs Trust. And I went to this event and I just felt like dressing like a man. So I wore this suit and I can't remember where I got it from and the tie. And I think I just wanted to do something different. I think I'd probably just turned 30. No, I was a bit older. I think I was, I'm 33, 34. I look back now, I think the hair could have been different. I look a bit long and lanky. This is at my nephew, the one who was christened. He's at Eton, where his brother was. And we are at the 4th of June, which is a light sports day at Eton. And I'm wearing my Prada necklace, which was stolen out of my suitcase. And it upset me for so long. With a Marni dress, which Lila loves, and a faux fur, which I wear endlessly. And this Prada coat that I've also lost. And I'm gutted I've lost. And I love this outfit. I love the colours and everything. This is at my old school, Bedgebury Park. I went to it at 11. I stayed down the first year because I wasn't clever enough. And I I had to make friends all over again. I was very unhappy the first couple of years and then it got better. And this is my first proper vintage dress that I loved. I love that yellow sleeve and I lost this dress. I'm gutted. I'm wearing these Prada heels that are somewhere in this house and I have to find them because they're magnificent. And there's my sister. We both went to school. We went back because I was talking at speech day and they didn't tell me until I arrived that they just told all the parents that they couldn't come back their kids the next year because they were closing down the school. And then I was faced with 300 angry parents for speech day speeches. This is at a wedding with Lila. Uh, I remember I loved this outfit and she was a bridesmaid. It was in Rome and I'm wearing a sort of fascinator, which I don't always love fascinators, but I adore this. It had these sort of ruffles. And I do remember though, I just didn't have the breasts to wear it because I just had been feeding Lila for a year and there was nothing left. They were raisins. So it probably deserved better breasts, but it was such a sweet thing. This is Lila and I with Sid, who she has today in Spain, one of her favourite toys. I just loved the flowers. I love this picture. And I think I look and I think I'm so happy and I'm feeling I've got time off with my daughter. That's a lovely ring I'm wearing that is real and it was stolen. All my jewellery was stolen. And I did love that ring. I remember this is a McQueen jacket cut in 28 different pieces to make the jacket so intricate and fantastic and I sold it it's one of the things I sold to start the business and Mew Mew boots Lila loved twinning she loved nothing more than to be wearing the same thing as me so Mr Happy was our favourite um, Mr Men so I found these Mr Happy t-shirts she was so happy she doesn't look so happy there but she was so happy to be wearing this and that's in our old kitchen this is in the Hamptons and there was this hurricane that had just happened. It was the most incredible light. And I remember we all felt ethereal. And Lila was this, with this little, tiny little bob, Sandy, it was her godmother. And this is one of my scars I still have today. And I remember the air. I remember how fresh it was and mystical because it was just this eye of the storm. It's the most magical day. And it was also with her godfather, who's not in the picture, who died in August. And I just look at this and I remember that day so well. 
This is me at the BAFTAs and Suzanne and I think thought we might be winning a BAFTA so I did dress up, make the effort and it's an Alice Templey dress and Lila wore it and she wears it now but she cut off the bottom. <laughs> Molly and I got out recently to wear something and I've forgotten she cut the bottom off so it was way too short. This is Tanya and I, one of my oldest friends in India at a wedding and I love this Jenny Packham dress. Lila wore this for her graduation and she did cut the bottom off as well, nearly criminal and we bought this jewellery in Jaipur. I got had these earrings stolen as well. It was a fantastic wedding. It was just a magical few days. And I love Tanya very much. And to be on a way with her and have this memory of our friend getting married was wonderful. This is Johnny, Lila's dad and I, and we're at the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg on the 21st of June at an event and the most incredible evening of this very famous Russian pianist. And he played a duo with another pianist, like a sort of fight of the pianos. And it was incredible in this mirrored hall like Versailles. And I'm in Alice Temple dress with a furry thing and, and a Prada headband there which I adored and I just felt elegant and chic and I felt right for the setting. I adored it. This is me and I've had lots of pictures of this and this is where I look at this. I had no boobs but I did have nipples and you could see them through the dress and I remember it was the next day in the Daily Mail and I didn't mind. I've never been embarrassed by the fact I have nipples. Everyone has nipples, men and women and it's just it's a nipple. What the hell? But this was a vintage dress with a Prada little slither of neon and it was when I loved that concept of lace and beige with modern neon. It's when I first fell in love with the concept of what neon does to something really classic. Another vintage dress. I still wear a lot of vintage dress, but I sold lots of these dresses. Lace see-through dress with a beautiful shoe. I think it's a Christiane Louboutin shoe, and I adored the silver and the turquoise and put a little jacket over the top. This is Tanya and I again. You can see we have a great fun at parties. And I was invited to Valentino party in Rome. It was a very sophisticated party. And I was dressed by Valentino. It was so exciting. And, and Valentino does this incredible chartreuse. And I found these flowers in the hotel reception that happened to be the same colour. And I just put them in my hair. Um, those earrings are not real. They're fake. And lots of bracelets I got in India. I remember it was actually that same year, I think. So that's in the wrong order. But she's the best party companion. This is me coming out of Annabelle's, when it used to be the old Annabelle's, in a Max Mara dress. It was just a moment. I was photographed quite a lot then and didn't love being photographed. I never was good at it. And I wore these Prada headbands a lot. You can see the era. There's a sort of theme that runs through for a few years. But yeah, I just remember that look. This is a very old a design like that, I'll remember. But it's a fantastic dress. Chocolate brown is not my colour. Lila wants to wear it desperately, so I'm going to give it to her to wear soon. This is my sister and I, and we're at my mother's and father's wedding anniversary at her house in Spain. And I remember there was this picture of the Queen with her two daughters, the Queen Mother with her two daughters. And we sort of emulated this with my mum. I haven't got the picture of my mum, my sister and I, but it was just sweet by a tree. And my sister loves wearing this look, and it looks so beautiful on her. And I was wearing a very old dress by Serena Butte when she did this brand called Anonymous, and these long strings of pearls that I used to wear then. It was my kind of signature then. This looks funny, but I, I remember... This because a friend of mine called Sasha Chavese had a film premiere and we went to it and and I felt really great. And afterwards we had dinner and Keanu Reeves was there and we sort of chatted and then we were walking in the streets of London and people took our picture and then it was something about it the next day in the press. It was the only night I met him, but he was charming and lovely. I felt gorgeous. I felt good. You know, I felt sexy. Susanna and I in India press photographs. I'm in Stella McCartney. And this is just us. We used to work nine months of the year abroad, really strenuous. So when we do these photo shoots, we just let our hair down a bit. That is us not faking laughing. We just, we're just like, can we still doing this this many years later? This is my sister and I at my niece Pookie's wedding. You can see that faux fur thing I wear a lot with another vintage dress and little flowers that I got from a shop on off Sloan Square. Lila and I, the Queen's Jubilee, I think the Golden Jubilee, and I adore this outfit. It's outside where the Queen's barge took off from and we saw the Queen really close up and Lila was so excited and we both wore God Save the Queen t-shirts. I'm very patriotic and red, white and blue. And there's a very sweet picture that Lila has by her bed of Johnny and myself and her in this frame as well. And I just love that. This is me in an olive Tiskins for Nina Rishi dress and it's a very beautiful dress I've worn it quite a lot and I always feel good and it is a long dress this is me in the Saint dress at the Serpentine party and I just separated from Johnny and I was going out and there was all like who she's going out with and I took a friend of mine who was married to one of my best friends we went together and there was all this kind of oh who she with moment it was quite we both chuckled about it but I just found 
I adored this dress and I have a belt on over it and I just like the look. I decided to make my hair straight and different. You change things up. Lila and I matching again. Here we are on holiday together and she wanted to do sarongs how I did sarongs. So I found a Miss Only one for her and she just felt so grown up and I remember she did her hair the same. and Just a sh- 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 sweetie, sweetie. Lila and I had a wedding in Marseille and this is my high-low moment. I'm wearing a Saint Laurent jumpsuit which I do not know where it is. I look at this and think, my God, who did I lend it to? Because I'm not in my wardrobe anywhere. A ring I adore that I still have. Lila is in Monsoon and I've got a Zara jacket on. This is me, acne jacket. Lila, I had to find her acne jumper because she wanted to have this yellow jumper. So that's her. And I just found it for her and we got it for her and she was so excited. But she's a bit tired in the picture. This is me again filming somewhere in the world. I can't remember, but I just feel happy. I can see I'm really happy. And these are two people I adore who I worked with. And it just reminds me of those really good memories we had of filming. And it was so tough, the filming, but it was the cruise that made us have the best time. And Johnny on the left is one of them. And here I am in the national costume of Norway. These are very expensive. Women really save up. And on the summer, they celebrate. And it's such a beautiful, intricately made, it's such honour to wear somebody else's national costume. And I just felt I'd done so many shows in Norway and I felt a little part of, of the Norwegian people that little bit more. And they're just beautiful beautiful costumes. Uh, Here I am in India and I wore this wonderful skirt and top, a lungi I think it's called, but it was incredibly ornate and we were doing the finale of a show and I remember I couldn't go to the loo. So my lovely hairdresser had to help me and lift up my skirt to get me into the loo. And it was so intricate. Look at the workmanship on that. It's just so beautiful. And I wore all this Indian jewelry and I'm so happy Susanna's taking the picture and we were in some little telecabine. This is very just poignant this image this is at St Columbus which is a church where I was christened and I was married and my family have been buried and Lila's father is buried there and my father had his funeral there and my sister and I turned up for the funeral not knowing what we each going to wear and it was just so ironic so I did the sort of that sense of in India you wear white at a funeral and my sister was wearing black but it was just this homage to my father and we both knew we wanted to look elegant and chic because he would love that my father was a peacock in the family so it was just so funny that we did this. This is um, walking up the mountains in France in the mountains and we're walking up a mountain which is where we threw my father's ashes off and we're walking up with his ashes in my backpack or in James is behind us and James is a lovely man who's one of the mountain guides we've known for many years and he walked us up this mountain that my father said one day he would climb and he never did so we climbed it and we threw his ashes off and I just I love this photo because it's just me at my most away from everything in the world on a mountain where it's nothing to do with fashion. This is Lila and I in Japan. We always travel, Lila and I, and I think that's where you make the most memories. It's where I spend the most money is making these memories with my daughter. This is an old part of Tokyo. It's really beautiful. And I remember it was cold, cold, cold. And I wore this Topshop coat and a furry thing and loved it. This is in Utah and I'm on a horse. <laughs> And uh, I uh, had this Alice Temperley. I was going for a weekend of somebody's, one of my best friends. They were celebrating their 60th. And they invited us all for this incredible five-day trip. And I remember I put everything in hand luggage and everyone was so impressed. But I didn't know I was going to ride a horse. So I just thought, you know, there people don't wear helmets and you go on these guided walks. And I generally always do wear a helmet, but here I didn't. And I have an old hat on and then this Alice Temperley coat that I put over and I just adored the way that women rode when they rode in the olden days in the Wild West in skirts and I just I just love that picture. (laughs) This is me at the Monkey Palace in Rajasthan and it's full of monkeys. It's just a temple. But there are thousands of monkeys and I went with Lila and Zach. We took on this fantastic trip with some friends of mine and I'm in a Tory Burch dress I adored. This is Lila and I at the wedding of my partner's daughter Phoebe, um, who I used to go with and uh, she had the most incredible wedding. Lila was a bridesmaid. I loved this. It was just such a romantic weekend and she was so happy and it was just a lovely memory. This is me outside this morning where I do some of the fashion over the years and I was wearing this Zara whole outfit, head to toe is bloody Zara actually. But it felt chic and elegant and it just shows how far you can go and how sophisticated you can look doing the high street. Only the bag is not. This is me in an outfit and in the top which had to make it the prize, that silver bit of tinsel that is equally loved and loathed and I adore it. It's just magical for me. It just makes every outfit seem exciting. And so I'm just like standing there. I think we'd done a freeze frame because I had to find a picture of it. And um, essentials Antwerp tweed suit, which I 
which I wear a lot. This is me in bringing together, you know, that thing of closet confessions where we think, how do we bring things together from our wardrobe? And these are, you know, the necklace is probably 25-year-old Prada. The skirt is about 18-year-old Prada. The jacket is even older and the handbag is the same as the skirt. And it's just how you can take things from five, 10 years apart from a designer. And there's just always this relationship because the same person has designed them. And when you bring them back together, they still work. This is me doing head to toe sunflowers. Sunflowers are gorgeous. I could not have a vampire's wife dress in here. And even though this is not my one of my most glitzy ones, it's one that I've always brought me joy. I remember I walked around the Queen's Jubilee in this dress and met lots of lovely people who had recognised me and come up in the street. It was a very joyous day. But I got sunflower shoes on, a sunflower bag. Everything is a bloody sunflower. And, and we can't not have these glasses. I got these glasses in Capri, a about 10 years ago and I haven't lost them it's staggering I've bought many sunglasses I've never lost these glasses and I think I have and I haven't thank god because cost per wear I'm still paying for them this is head to toe Zara apart from the bag again and it's about pattern on pattern on pattern and it represents to me that idea that the more pattern you wear the easier it gets to be able to wear it and not let it wear you and that to me was an example of it this is just about color it's about the joy of color and what it does you know i adore putting this together i like the layering there's a zara trousers serena butte shirt and a cos sleeveless top and a bag i can't remember where it's from but i really liked it i felt good in it and i know when i just say come on molly let's pop outside and do a out for the day because i'm feeling good this is me doing a shoot and wearing this old suit I got from Yoji Yamamoto in Tokyo 7, a vintage shop in New York. And I adored this with this very strong shirt. And we're in the studio doing some shots. And I just feel that's me as a businesswoman who likes fashion. It kind of represents with the makeup behind me. It really represents who I am. This is me at my desk and it's my desk in the office wearing our brown colours for a press shoot. But it was one I felt good at. You know, my office sits out and I can see everyone. It's open plan. I'm literally in my knickers sometimes in the office strutting around. You know, it's embarrassing for everybody else. It's a home from home. This is a look I just really like doing. It's at the art of layering and how many layers can you take? Those people watching this might think that's very hot and sweaty, but for me, I love the concept of layering and texture. And this is just taking the palette of gray and black and bringing it all together and doing short and long. And the jacket is a very old Stella. The scarf is an old Saint Laurent for Vista Village. The jumper is Saks Potts. The jeans are Zara and the bag is Saint Laurent. Another one here, this is Leopard on Leopard on Leopard, the representation of you can do the same print in bigger or smaller sizes. And jeans are Ganny, the... Top is Zimmerman, that Stella McCartney I bought at Vestiaire Collective and the coat is H&M and the bag is Harvey Nichols. And I just, I adore this look. It was a very cold day. We were just about to film a takeover show with Chloe. And I remember I said, come on quickly, let's do a picture. This is about collar contrast and it's corduroy suit from Kos and a Serena Butte shirt with an Arquette bag, but orange and uh, Colbert blue, beautiful. This I felt very elegant. We were doing something for, I'm a part of the Prince's Trust, Women Sporting Women. I'm, I'm a patron of the charity and we were doing a breakfast for Women Sporting Women to support Girls for Change campaign. It's a campaign that supports women in underprivileged backgrounds to really get a step up the ladder, start their own businesses. And, and it's a Camilla and Mark suit I got in Australia and a Valentino cape. I felt I want to be elegant, sophisticated in this and I felt it. This is lovely Joey the label. I have to include her, an amazing Australian woman, a part of the Trinity tribe, and it's head to toe. I, mean, I think Victoria Beckham shirt, but this is her suit. This is me. This is navy, and it's sequins, and it's a trouser suit. Boom. This is me on holiday. I was on holiday with Charles in this incredible, beautiful town in the middle of Tuscany. And I wore this big oversized Celia Vonstead dress and a little Trini London tote. I've got an oversized one and a big, huge hat and my Prada slip-ons. And I loved this. I felt so like I was wearing this tent and I breezed. This is COVID shot. And I just thought, you know, let's do contrast colouring even when we're going out with COVID. And I just felt also like sort of a Batman. I don't know. Um, Dries, uh, long shrug. This is one Molly loves this, and I haven't got hardly any of this left, but it makes me think, God, I wish I could bring this together again because I got rid of the dress and I have the shirt, so maybe I could do something. But I took the collar off, and in fact, in this one, the collar looks good. But the TSE cashmere is this long coat, and I love the colours together. This is me for the book, and it's a look that challenged me. Annie Swain is a woman I work with when we do books over the years, an amazing stylist, and she's fantastic, and we encourage each other to be our best in really finding those looks and this is just a white shirt and a tight Victoria Beckham skirt but it made me look at being sexy call my agent French woman way and I liked it this is rock chick we all want to be a rock chick and I like this rock chick look I love the boot and the jacket Zara and the Joseph dress and a tight jean from Zara I think 
This is elegant woman. I'm in a temperly lace dress and a hat from and other stories and some earrings I got in India and shoes from Robert Clergery. These shoes have to get a look in. I've got so many pairs of them and I love them. This is me. I could not have silver sequins. This is something I did as a shot for the cover of the book and we used a different cover in the end. But this is 16 Arlington. I loved this shirt. It's beautiful. And crystal cane trousers. But I love silver sequins. I'll probably be buried in them. And my Trini London ring, which one day I will make for all of you. This is just, you know, navy blue and icy turquoise. Great colour combination. This is black and white. Now, you know, I don't do black and white often, but I think black and white, when I do it, I want it to be architectural. And this is being architectural again, and we did it for the book, and I felt it was like an old Celine out. I felt really cool in it. This is yellow. Could not have yellow. Head to toe yellow. A Givenchy coat I got in a sale somewhere. Serena boot trousers, and I remember the trousers, a memory of them, because I had a car crash in LA, and I was wearing these trousers, and they cut into the steering wheel. I, it was quite bad, the accident, and they got ruined. This is my favourite head to toe yellow outfit. This is me, pattern on pattern. Colours that shouldn't suit me, and yet it came together. Zara suit, Prada jumper. Red, I hardly ever wear it, and I put this on, head to toe red, and I loved it because I did a red lip. And when I've done red before, I haven't done a red lip, and it hasn't worked. And doing that red lip, a swainy lip, it really worked, and I felt good in it. Orange and cobalt blue again, but I had to put it in. This is me in the country. I'm in Scotland, one of my favourite places. I am half Scottish, and this cloak is my mother's. I think it was actually her father's. It's our hunting tartan, and I'm in a outside of Bothy in Scotland, in a very beautiful, beautiful place I get invited to occasionally. And I'm wearing my grandfather's sporran as well. Um, it's Lila and I in Tanzania this winter, and I'm in Zara jacket and trousers and a waistcoat I got in a shop in Italy. But it's about the memory here, and it's about also how Lila and I, how her style has evolved. So she no longer obviously dresses like me. She's got incredible style, Lila. Unbelievable. She puts things together and she just does it and I love her style so much. It's not my style, it's her style. And she's cool and quirky and I really respect how she dresses, I love it. And then this is a look I did a few days ago and I thought, wow, I love this look. I love this look so much that I'm actually wearing it as I'm doing this video today. And I've worn it two days in a row and I nearly want to wear it tomorrow. But it's just, there's something about it which brings me utter joy. And it's ageless cool. That to me is ageless cool. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this little run back through time on how I evolve my style. Wow. Yeah. What a trip. <laughs> I know, it had a good trip. Um, so uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Now next week, because we've had a really full on week, I haven't had time to film one. So I thought I would take you through my safari wardrobe because there's some really good inspo there for you if you're packing for anything where there's some outdoor activity. Can't wait. Thank you. See you next week. Bye.